Words can be very, very tricky things. Occupations where words come at premium prices, like famous YouTubers, only reinforce that fact. Recently, YouTube megastar PewDiePie caught himself in one of those unsavory situations where words cut open a can of worms. If you're unfamiliar with the situation, here's a quick rundown. During a live stream of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, PewDiePie, real name Felix Yeldberg, shouted the n-word in frustration after a teammate of his was killed. I'm gonna play the video right now, uncensored. What? What the fuck's happening? What the hell was that? The potato was fucking insane. I was holding it so fucking straight. What a fucking nigger. Jeez, oh my god. What the fuck? Sorry, but what the fuck? What a fucking asshole. I don't mean that in a bad way. Jesus fuck. <laughs> Why would he do that? Not long after his outburst, Sean Vanneman, co-founder of Campo Santo, the development team behind Firewatch, tweeted that the company would file a DMCA takedown for all of their content on PewDiePie's channel. A DMCA takedown is used when a company feels its content's copyright is being infringed upon. The party that receives a DMCA takedown can challenge the acquisition via fair use, under which it can be argued the content was copied, but done so in a limited or transformative way. If fair use is recognized, the DMCA takedown has no effect. After issuing an apology video, PewDiePie fleshed out his opinion a little bit more in a later video, saying that while he initially privatized the video himself out of respect for Campo Santo, their DMCA strike was eventually accepted by YouTube. When I saw these tweets, I immediately privatized the video out of respect for his request, but my video got claimed anyway. It got the strike anyway. Interestingly enough, in the second video, PewDiePie said he felt he'd win if he were to take Campo Santo to court, though he decided against taking him to court in the end. I could probably fight this in court and I would probably win, but I decided to just delete the video and not waste everyone's time more about this. Like I said, this everything about this was my fault. The, the whole drama, I'm the one starting it, but I still think it's an interesting discussion to talk about. This story is one with a lot of angles. We have an internet personality coming off recent controversies of similar kinds, re-injecting himself back into the news. We have a developer deciding to utilize one of the most controversial and disputed laws in response, and in what some see as an abusive fashion. And the entire story skates on the already thin ice of YouTube's current ongoing issues surrounding DMCAs and skittish advertisers. For the first part of this video, I'm going to solely focus on Campo Santo's DMCA takedown. This is not to say that the other topics are unimportant or simple, but only that I chose to focus on the legality of the DMCA takedown. I found PewDiePie's confidence somewhat surprising, not because I'm particularly fluent in copyright law, but because the general consensus seems to point at a very grey and nebulous situation with a very grey and nebulous outcome. Fortunately, I was able to snag an interview with Leonard French, Pennsylvania-based attorney and host of the YouTube channel The Lawful Masses, to help clarify some of the questions I had about the legality of the DMCA strike. The crux of the situation, if not an important piece of the crux, seems to be Campo Santo's streaming policy, which explicitly states the game can be streamed and that those streams may also be monetized. It even asks streamers to connect with the company on social media. They put out a streaming policy. And so we had an express written streaming policy on their website that says, go ahead and stream, let's plays, monetize, whatever, it's better, it's good for everybody. And PewDiePie, without knowing anything more about his relationship with Campo Santo directly, um, PewDiePie just created a Firewatch video and played it and it got 5.7 million views or something like that. So that was done under that license. So the question becomes, can they revoke that license and what can they revoke? And I think absolutely they can revoke the license. You can always revoke the license. The question is, then what effect does that have? Does he have to remove his video from YouTube? Are new people not allowed to see it? Does it affect the existing video at all? Or should it only be that he's not allowed to create new Let's Play? PewDiePie's second video also seems to reinforce the idea that the streaming policy would headline any legal battle between himself and Campo Santo. The thing though that a lot of people pointed out shortly after these tweets were made 
was that they have a stream policy on their website. This is literally if you go to firewatchgame.com slash about, it says, can I stream this game? Can I make money off of those streams? Yes. We love that people stream and share their experience in the game. You are free to monetize your videos as well. So people pointed this out, but there's still arguments against saying it doesn't matter because Let's Plays still aren't fair use, so they can do whatever they want. And I would I would agree because basically Sean said he will he will strike down any one of my future Let's Plays and the current the the past one. My discussion with Leonard French was before PewDiePie made either his apology video or his video where he said he wouldn't be taking Campo Santo to court. This was something Leonard just so happened to correctly predict. Um, so when you say you don't think it's going to go to court, what specifically do you mean by that? Well, Campo Santo um, it may have taken down PewDiePie's Firewatch videos. As long as that was the extent of it, why would PewDiePie want to call more attention to the incident by fighting that in court. Uh, if he just doesn't make any more Firewatch videos, the situation's done. It's a very interesting legal problem. Uh, again, I predict, I don't, I don't think there will be a lawsuit over this. I don't think we will see this adjudicated, which is, which is good and bad. It's good in the sense that of the devil you don't know. You, what, if, what if the outcome's going to be bad? Well, now we don't have that outcome yet. Uh, if the outcome's gonna be good, though, we miss out on that opportunity. I've reached out to both PewDiePie and Campo Santo for comment, though PewDiePie has yet to respond prior to this video being recorded. Campo Santo, however, did respond, sharing a BuzzFeed article in which Vanaman said, quote, I love streamers. I stream and I watch streamers literally every day. I'm sure a lot of them say things that I hate and have political views that are different than mine, but I don't care because we just play video games together. I wish there was a clear way to say we don't want our work associated with hate speech, even accidental hate speech if that's what it was. I regret using a DMCA takedown. Censorship is not the best thing for speech, and if I had a way to contact PewDiePie and take the video down, I probably would. He's a bad fit for us, and we're a bad fit for him. When I sat down to write this video, I wanted to think of something I could add to the discussion. There have been a lot of YouTubers and a lot of outlets saying a lot of things, and I didn't want to be someone who just threw another log onto the fire of internet rage, whether or not you think that rage is justified. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with a DMCA strike being used in this fashion. It doesn't feel like it's being used the way it's intended to be used. Don't get me wrong though, what PewDiePie said was wrong. That doesn't mean I don't think there's a conversation to be had about words and meanings and content contexts and cultures, but what PewDiePie did was just immature. He even admitted he just tried to think of the worst word he could possibly say. I hate how I now personally fed into that part of gaming as well. It was something that I said in the heat of the moment. I said the worst word I could possibly think of, and it just sort of slipped out. And I'm not going to make any excuses to why it did, because there are no excuses for it. And understand, when I say that, I say knowing I've done dumb things in my life too, everyone has. The difference being, of course, that PewDiePie has an audience of 50 million and his actions didn't just have an effect on the way one of the biggest companies on earth interacts with other gigantic companies, but also the laws that govern those interactions. And for the future, perhaps it's something we can all learn from and use to smoothen the roads of this new digital era rather than make them more rocky. Maybe I sound overly optimistic or naive, and maybe I am, but that has to be the better alternative, to use this experience as a building block, to fix what needs to be fixed and continue forward, rather than using it to satiate the hungry crowds of sensationalism, anger, and outrage.